Hi everyone, it's Cammy here. Thank you so much for listening to this week's Heart and Hand. If you happen to listen to the shows on the Apple, Android or Spotify platforms, could you please give Heart and Hand a follow on there? They may also ask you to write a wee review and if you could write us a really good one, we would massively appreciate it. Thank you so much. Hello everyone and welcome to Heart and Hand, the Rangers podcast. This is your extra show for the week as we begin the old firm build-up for this Sunday's game at Ibrox. My name is Cameron Bell, I'm your host as always and it is my pleasure and my privilege to introduce my guest this week all the way from the other side of this blue marble, Mr Rob Shorthouse. Rob, thank you for joining me. What time is it in your part of the world at the moment? Uh, it's um, it's dinner time, uh, so um, I think you've just you'll just have had your cornflakes, and I'm just about to get my dinner. So um, the amazing th- the, the amazing uh, world of time differences. Well, yeah, I'm still adjusting from the clocks going back last weekend, so I can't even imagine the calculations in my head of of the differences between the two of us at the moment. But thank you so much for for joining me. It is a, a privilege to have you on extra uh, and I hope that you're keeping well and um, still obsessed with all things Rangers. Yeah absolutely uh, you, you know the, the the thing about time zones without becoming like two boring old farts talking about time zones um, you basically uh, you, you calculate it on Rangers so the Rangers game is either seven hours uh, or eight hours behind that's basically it you don't think about anything else it's just like right well if, if it's a three o'clock kickoff during the summer months it's uh it's 10 o'clock here and you're the one that's 11 o'clock and that's how you think about it because Rangers is the only way in which you can properly rationalise anything in your life. So yes, I probably am still obsessed. I do that a couple of levels up where I don't really tend to talk in years or talk in seasons. So, ah, exactly right. you know, you don't say 2023, you say 2022 slash 23. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. A year, I, I know a year not, runs from August to May. Yeah. Exactly. I know I'm not the only person that uh, that does that. There's certainly a few of them that will be listening to this as well. Um, Rob, we uh, we had a little bit of a change uh, to our scheduled programming uh, this week as uh, David uh, wasn't able to bring out uh, flagship on Monday. However, he was able uh, to bring us our heart and hand live show in uh, London's West End with Paul Gascoigne. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to it yet. I I know that everyone who has had an opportunity to listen to it, um, I was obviously fortunate enough to be on stage with with Gaza. Um, It's a brilliant show. And what's great, I I think more than anything else in terms of his stories, um, is just being able to hear him um, in such good health and and, in a good place mentally, I think, as well. Um, so our, our apologies, listeners, for the fact that there was a little bit of a change, but I think we've we've more than made up for it in terms of the quality of the show. Oh, absolutely. So, so look, I, I've not listened to it yet, um, but what I what I can say is what I know about the impact that it had on you guys. Um, you know, all of us pointers, no surprise. You know, we're all in, we're all in a group chat together. You know, you know, experienced guys. You know, guys our age, uh, Cami, um, including yourself, were, were genuinely. You know, excited in the build-up to go to meet the man, and then afterwards, you know, just you know, the likes of Martin and everybody else, just talking about how amazing it was to spend time in his company. You know, what a hero he actually is to to all of them, and 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 I guess the underlying thing is exactly what you say is, look, we all know how troubled he is. We all know, you know, the things that he's had to go through in his life, um, for 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 good and bad, um, but you know, fundamentally, he is a you know, he's, a, he's a decent human being and, and all you really want to know is that he's doing okay because you know there's always that worry there with Gaza isn't it you know that he's, he's, he's been keeping so poorly over the years that one day you're going to wake up and he'll not be there anymore so so just to see the impact it had on you guys you know and the build-up to it uh, and, and then the aftermath um, you know just the, the, the genuine love that, that you've all got from which I know is shared amongst all, you know, so many people who'll be listening to this Pod and who will have listened to the the highlights from the show in London. So yeah, I, I, I'm I'm looking forward. To it. I'm carving a bit of time to, to to listen to it properly. But yeah, what a guy. Yeah, and um, it's funny you mention that because, um, as you know, Rob, we never record our live shows. This was actually done by our executive producers at Playback. Um, and what was 
it, what was really interesting about it was because we were we were I mean everyone in the room was fixated when he was talking. Um, and uh, I, I will ask you because again you've you've not had the chance to be able to listen to it yet. But he does talk about a period uh, where he's he's leaving the club and he's heading down to Middlesbrough. Um, and without a word of a lie, you've said obviously about the guys on stage with him and stuff as well. He gets uh, he actually does get quite upset. Um, yeah. And he has to take a pause. And I'll tell you right now, there was several people in the audience and on stage who immediately started to kind of well up a little bit. Um, and it's it's so strange because again, like you say, you're talking about ninety eight percent laughter as you're as you're hearing some of the stories and some of his, you know, escapades and all the rest of it. But that single moment, I think, when you hear it, probably. Um, complimented by when he went back out on stage because he, he, you know, after the show had finished and got a standing ovation as you would absolutely expect. I think it really hits with him now um, about that period and it's one of those things, right, and you and I can totally relate to it because we've had it in our lives as well, that you probably just don't appreciate that period or those experiences until you know, in some cases you know, very long afterwards. And you can just see as to how much it resonates in his heart about, you know, that point, the players that he was alongside, but also the relationship he has with the fans to this very day. Yeah. But, but look, we're, I, I know we're going to talk about the Hibs game and, and, and we'll talk about somebody, I'm not saying he's the same player as, uh, as Gaza, but, you know, when we talk about Tav, one of the things you often hear about Tav is, he, you know, we won't know how good he is or how, how good he's been for us until, until he's gone. And that's, I suppose, with Gaza, you know, we were... Fortunate enough, you and I were of the similar age, Cammy, that we were of an age to go and watch Rangers when we had, you know, like Gascoigne and Loudrop and all these other amazing players. Um, and, you know, you have that moment of wonderment when you sign them and then they just become a player who who you go and watch and they're just part of the team. Um, and you love them, uh, you know, unconditionally the way that you do when, when, you, when you have a hero. But it's, I suppose, now looking back on it, uh, and thinking about just how amazing he was, and you're know, watching all these games on, on YouTube and everything else, and you just realise, God, he was just so brilliant. Um, and that that week where he went to Middlesbrough, um, I, I guess is a case in point about what I'm saying, because you know, there was a lot of people were upset that he was going and saying, oh, this is going to cost us 10 in a row and all this kind of stuff. But he had been so troubled at, at that point and his, his form had dipped and everything else that there was just a... Yeah, that, that's okay. Fair enough. We're going to get some money back from probably right time from it to go. Um, and from a footballing point of view, I suppose that makes sense. But we just loved them so much, and 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 you know, ha- not having them there, you know, did did become really troubling. I suppose because not just of you know his abilities on the pitch, but just the impact they had on the club and the the the, the status that he afforded us because he was such a big name in football and everything else. He was, it was just. Uh, in danger of rambling here, you know, just because I love the guy so much. But you know, it was, it was just a golden, golden period for us. And I think what you're saying is that you know that through the show, and uh, he's expressed the fact that he, he has come to realise it was a golden time for him as well. Yeah, I mean, that that's beautifully captured. I think in terms of uh, just his mindset towards it as well. So. Um, yeah, like Rob, if you guys haven't had a chance to listen to it, it is on our Patreon, but also our uh, usual um, free-to-air sites as well, so please get a chance to be able to jump on there and hear that as well. Um, Rob, as you mentioned there, because of no flagship, we didn't really get a chance to, to cover the Hibs game last weekend. Um, I think for me, uh, I, 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 I want to say a, a pretty straightforward game, but obviously some complications because of things like um, penalty rules. Um, Hibs uh, probably scored a goal, which I think that was pretty disappointing for us to concede. I know that the manager certainly felt that way and you saw the expression in the players as well when, when Hibs were able to, to get a goal back. Um, but in, in, in retrospect, one of those games I think where in the moment, you're probably not overly happy in terms of how we performed, but then, and you when you look at it in the cold light of day the next day, relatively straightforward. And I think for me, uh, serving a, a solid purpose and allowing some of the players who uh, were due to come back from from injuries some game time, and in particular Abdallah Sima as well, who I think a few of us yeah. could have felt, well, I don't know if we'll see him again. 
Um, what were your thoughts overall watching the game and then and obviously in the, the queue in a few days since? Yeah, I mean, I think I, I think you're right. You know, watching the game, I mean, I just hate VAR now. I mean, just it's just it's just ruining the game. I, I think. Look, I completely understand why it's been brought in, and you know, if you switch off your emotions and, and passions for it and, and, and look at it dispassionately, then you can say it's probably a good thing. But you know, when you get all this nonsense that we that we seem to be getting week in week out. You know, about encroachment and penalties and all this. It's just, it's, it's, it's. I, I just find it absolutely, really, really, really annoying. Uh, and it's taken a lot of enjoyment out of the game. You know, even just down to the fact that every goal gets checked when it, when it obviously doesn't need to get checked, and you have this sort of delay before people can properly celebrate and stuff. I, I, VAR is driving me absolutely potty at the moment, and something needs to change. I think um, fundamentally with it because. You know things like you know being a couple of millimeters uh, offside, or your you know your toes offside, or your toes in the box when a penalty's been taken, and you know confusion about what's happened, and it's not been properly explained to fans, and so I, so I think I, I think my big takeaway was was a sort of ongoing frustration with VAR. Um, I thought the goal that we conceded was really really troubling, um, and uh, I'm glad that the manager sort of spoke about it the way that he did. Because it was a really, really bad goal. We were carved wide, wide open. I, I thought, not looking to single in him out, but I'm, but I'm about to, I suppose. Um, you know, because the the whole defence wasn't great, and in fact, the whole team wasn't great for the goal. But you know, John Suter's got to stop committing himself um, to tackles. If he'd stood up against his man, uh, uh, that that goal doesn't happen. I don't think. You know, it was a bad position that he was in. Yeah, because of the through ball, but you know he just overcommits himself all the time, and 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 and, and I, I find myself sort of shouting at the telly um, when when that goal went in. Um, but but in saying all of that, the only thing that matters right now is three points, and it's a, it's a cliche I know, but with so few games left to go, the big one coming up uh, this weekend, we got the three points. We got some game time for some players. The players have had a chance to rest because of the international break and the cancelled game. Um, and um, yeah, I think all you can really do is look at it as, you know, another three points that's hopefully going to lead us towards um, winning the league. Yeah, the, the VAR one's interesting. And again, I think this is where um, I'm slightly jealous of you um, living in the other side of the world because we we are entrenched at the moment in terms of referee debates and um you know referee decisions it, it doesn't now there's a there's a, an interesting thing about this robin certainly you'll remember it from a good few years ago um where referees seem to be really problematic and var is pish when rangers are winning however when yeah. celtic have clean sweeps there's no issue with referees um and i'm not really too sure what the connection is there maybe someone can tell me <laughs> um, but the you know obviously we've got the head of SFA, uh, head of SFA referees Crawford Allen more or less been shoved out the door leave, leaving by mutual yeah. consent. Rob, you know, as 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 we we know what the 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 statement says when you read between the lines. Um, I disagree slightly in VAR because I'm actually a proponent of VAR. I do think that it can work, but then I think if you've got you know poor referees, you're going to have poor VAR referees. Do you know what I mean like there's no there's yeah. no getting away from that, Jimmy. Um, however, I think as well, what's interesting to me is VAR just seems to be a huge part of a Rangers world. Whereas um, when you look at Scottish football, pro the top flight, I'm going to be selfish and just say the top flight, you know, holistically, there are other issues with referees. VAR seems to be part of ours because for whatever reason, we, if it goes, if it goes for us, there seems to be, detailed scrutiny that has to go into VAR checks and various other things. However, if it goes against this, it just seems to be waved away. I you know, think more recently of our game um, up at Perth when um, you know, it seemed to, to to just be waved away in terms of any kind of penalty claims and then you yeah. know, we, uh, we eventually got the decision. So I think it is swings and roundabouts. The challenge that we've got at the moment, and I think this is why it was interesting, because we also don't really want to talk about Celtic in any capacity. I did find it interesting that, that Don Robertson was their referee on Sunday. Now, there wasn't too many contentious decisions uh, given in their game against Livingston, but I don't know who's running those scheduling appointments um, because obviously there's been the furore now that um, John Beaton has been appointed as the referee for the whole fun game this weekend. 
and I think your your problem is if you just dislike referees in general because you believe that there's a conspiracy against your club, um, and a conspiracy that's only started very recently after winning a treble last year, then I think it's difficult to justify why you dislike referees unless you feel that they have something specifically against you if you're a complete crackpot. Right now, we just probably have to swallow the fact that uh, referees are at an extremely poor standard. No one at the moment seems to care that referees are not being supported and their head honchos are heading out the door, you know, rather than being able to try and back them up. Um, we're not investing money um, into improving refereeing standards, whether or not they go full time, etc. And now we're just in this spin, I suppose, of uh, allowing certain clubs to be able to say and do whatever they want. Um, and obviously some of their fan bases, uh, no one wants to take the reins on saying that, you know, we have to increase the standard. I don't want to say protect referees because I think at times they, they make a road for their own back. I really genuinely do. I think we have top flight officials in this country that feel very comfortable being at the centre of it. Now, I'm a you know, referee myself, Rob, you know, I did it many, many years ago. And my ethos was always, I want to be completely forgotten about after this game. I want to be virtually yeah. invisible because I don't want the game to be about me. Some referees in Scotland and our top flight seem to have almost the opposite idea of it. But all of that to one side, I think that um, this is something which we haven't really spoken about in terms of the title running, but that scrutiny on referees is just going to continue and continue to get higher and higher as the stakes get higher and higher as well. And I think it will be interesting to see what impact it has on them if it continues in this fashion. Yeah, well, look, there's a lot to unpack there. I, I mean, on the VAR point, more generally, look, it's here to stay. You can't you know, you, you can put the genie back in the bottle. So I, I guess what we're looking for is a sort of fundamental re-examination of you know, the, the sort of basic points of VAR about what it's there to actually do. Because it's there, it's supposed, it's supposed to correct clear and obvious errors, and it's not. It's intervening in games much more widely than that and, and, and to the detriment of the game. So I think, you know, on that VAR point, I, I think it needs reform. And I, I, personally, I'd love it if we got rid of it, but that's never going to happen. So reform reform is needed uh, on VAR, I think, and everybody who loves the game could, could probably go on board with that. I mean, the second point about referees more generally. Um, I, I mean, I guess I've got a couple of points of view on this, Cammy. One, your sort of assertion that refereeing only becomes more of an issue the, the more potentially successful Rangers becomes, I think it's just clear and obvious now. Nobody was talking about referees back in September, October, when we were garbage and we were sacking our manager. Um, then we go on a run, we look far more organised, and next thing you know, it's all about, well, why won't referees give penalties against Rangers? Um, so it's you know, it's not, it's not paranoid. It's not a conspiracy. It is just the fact that um, as Rangers get more uh, successful, the fact that we get our, our, our sort of act together and look like we can win things, then uh, refereeing becomes a topic of conversation again. When it's when it's not, and as Davy Edgar's, I've heard him say it many times. You know that if it is a conspiracy in, in favour of Rangers, or you know, some sort of Masonic conspiracy at, at Hampden, then it's not a very good one, given how, how many trophies Celtic have won in the last the last sort of 10, 15 years. So uh, I think it is just you know self evident that that is exactly what 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 happens. Um, uh, and you know you, if you're being you know, if you're if you're trying to be devil's advocate, you say it's just because you know there's a there's 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 now a title race, so more people are looking more closely at decisions. But I mean, I just don't think that's the case. It's uh, it's you know directly correlated to how successful or how well Rangers are doing is is how much people are talking about decisions that may or may not be going in our favour. Um, on the point about refereeing standards, there there is no doubt. I think that there is significant room for improvement in, uh, in the standard of refereeing. And that's not just going to happen by itself. Something needs to be um, properly changed. So whether that is full time, whether you know, it is, you know, I don't know, bringing in referees from different associations, I don't know what it is, but it's just not going to fix itself. You know, we can't just keep on going along doing what we're doing at the moment and expect things to improve just because that's what's going to happen. It's not. You know, the game is much quicker. You know, the technology is putting referees under much more pressure. Um, and we do have people who seem to enjoy, uh, you know, when, when the camera is on them. 
So something needs to change quite dramatically, I think. Um, and it's, as I say, maybe you know, maybe Crawford Allen uh, moving on, somebody new coming in might have a different perspective on things. But you know, there are, the, the one thing you can you can constantly accuse the SFA of, and you know, obviously I used to work there. But you know, the one thing about the SFA is it's not an organisation that's quick to change. Um, and you know you can never really accuse it of being dynamic. But you know if you do have an opportunity for change, if you have Crawford Allen moving on, then uh, you know perhaps you can bring in somebody with a fresh perspective. But you know we, we've all seen this movie before, and I don't think we can be holding holding on to too much hope that we're we're on the cusp of something different because you know the status quo seems to be the the, the, the favoured position of people who run the game in Scotland. So, yeah, it's um, it, we're, we're not in good shape, Cammy. I don't think right across the piece. No, I, I think, listen, I think that's fair. I think it's a good conversation. I think I know that we've spent a bit of time talking about it, but I think it's good rather than just simply saying referees are poor, VAR's poor. It actually just seems to be that, that we're quite open for some some dialogue uh, to, to say, right, how do we improve it? Like, you know, we should be able to do it, try and do that. And I hope that you're absolutely right. I don't think the SFA are forward thinking. I'd like to hope that the member clubs can come together to say, look, this is a problem that impacts all of us. How do we fix it? And, you know, if we need to, how do we generate money to be able to try and put into it? But listen, we will see. Um, I can't not talk about the Hibs game, uh, Rob, without uh, getting your thoughts on a player that, that we mentioned uh, at the top of the show. James Tavernier are becoming... Uh, the British all-time high-scoring defender. Um, he uh, he threw his wife under the bus in the post-match. Uh, Rob, I don't know if you heard this. He had said that his wife told him if he gets a penalty, hit it down the middle. So uh, he's uh, he's had to move out of the house for the week. Um, <laughs> but uh, a tremendous, tremendous achievement. Um, he obviously... Uh, I want to say this about Tav, and I think, you know, regular listeners to any of the shows that we have on here or our or Patreon site, I, I'm, I I hold Tav to, to probably a different standard because as our captain, I think it's an immense responsibility. Um, I think that, you know, there's absolutely no doubt that he is absolutely deserving of his place in the Hall of Fame. His contribution to the team is is fantastic. I have been a long advocate for the last year or so that we need to be able to start uh, future proofing our right back system and that is based on being able to try and protect Tav because I think he he's he's lost the yard of pace which there's no problem with because he's getting older that's absolutely expected but you hit the nail on the head Rob when you're, you were saying about you know we'll probably appreciate him when he's gone um, one thing that you will never ever see Tav do is not take responsibility he misses the penalty but then he, he pops up with what was just a fantastic goal. Um, and and he, he, he continues to be a tremendous servant to Rangers. Um, and I'm really pleased that we're going to be able to, to have an opportunity to see him. He, he mentioned uh, that obviously there was a, a, a slight concern at the end of the, the, the game against Hibs of his... Uh, of a pool, but he'd mentioned that he hasn't been eating properly this week because he had some teeth removed. So there's no issues, and I'm just so glad that he is going to be able to lead the team out because, you know, whether or not we've won old firm games, whether or not that we've, um, uh, you know, we've we've been able to come away with a result or whatever we've tried to do, Tav can play in these games. He's scored some spectacular goals in these games. Um, sadly, because they've been defeats, I don't think too many people will remember him. But I still have all my faith in, you know, cometh the hour, cometh the man. Um, and again, as you've mentioned already, at some stage when we don't have him, we're going to remember periods like this and, and what he was able to contribute for us. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a, that's a great summary, Cammy. Uh, look, his numbers are unarguable, right? You know, the, the, the numbers alone make him, you know, a really significant player in our history. Um, because of because of you know the goals, the assists, um, the appearances, his you know how much he was signed for, and all that kind of stuff. You know, just if you look at him uh, in, in a purely number sense, then you know he's a terrific, terrific Rangers player. Um, but I think when you're talking about you know uh, his general performances uh, and you know his obvious love for the club, the way that he does always take responsibility, the way he always kind of stands up. 
Um, I think it marks him out as the, the type of player that particularly guys of our generation, Cammy, that we absolutely love because we we were we were brought up on Rangers players who who were who were, were Rangers. You know, they were they, they had a very very obvious love for the club, and I think that you can see that with Tav. I mean, I do need to be honest because you know over the years, I guess you know Tav becomes a bit of a lightning rod or a totem or whatever you want to call it for the fortunes of the club. You know, when when the club aren't doing well, I think you know people do, and I, and I include myself in this, do question or, or or find themselves questioning Tav. You know, you know he's not. You know, even going back to the early days, you know he's 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 not a great defender. Well, I think he's I think he actually is quite a good defender. But you know that was always the argument. And then you know when we were listless um, under Van Bronckhurst and yeah, and under Michael Beale, it was about leadership qualities and all that kind of stuff. So so whenever this um, all is not well with the team, I think people do tend to focus on Tav. Um, and as I say, I, I'm not going to criticise MD for doing it because I've, I've found myself doing it, um, doing it myself. But but I think that that fund, that points to the fundamental importance that he has to the team. That um, he is the player that we think of. So you know, if we're not doing well, then it's like, well, you know, Tav needs to step up. You know, and if it, and, and and I guess that just sort of underlines just how how big a player he is within that team. And you know, if just ask yourself this question: if we were you know, we're playing that mob at the weekend. Um, and how comfortable or confident would you feel if Tav wasn't in the team? And I think that answers. I think that answers any kind of question. You know, we 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 need them and we want them in the team, particularly in the big games, because he has done it so many times for us. Yeah, I, I think I refer to that as the oh shit moment when uh, you saw you saw him holding. You know, he's 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 hamstring when he was um, when he was playing against the, the tail end of Hibs because everyone's immediate thought exactly as you've just said was oh shit what if he has to miss the old firm game um, yeah. and so you're, you're absolutely bang on the money and by the way I know that we've spoken a lot because it's a, you know a running theme in terms of our current injury issues um, that's nothing to do with injuries that's to do with what he brings specifically so uh, listen I couldn't agree with you more I think there's also an added piece on that, as you touched on, Rob, as well, that I think, uh, you know, again, continuing that 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 um, piece on guys of our generation, I think the captain's armband wears heavy. And yeah. I think the, there's, there's certainly people, there's certainly people I know as well, who, you know, they look at him as a captain and then a player and then as a defender. And almost to a certain extent, if you can get him in one of those three angles, then that that's what works out, you know, if his cross is not good enough or defensively he's been poor or as a captain he should be taking responsibility. Um, however, I, I think, you know, if, you know, you are, uh, you know, critical of him in any of those regards, I can guarantee you, you also had a problem when you saw that in the kind of dying embers of the game last Saturday. So there's definitely yeah. swings and roundabouts with him as well. Speaking of uh, our injury lists and hopefully uh, some uh, you know, good news in that front in terms of, uh, I thought, a very good performance by Todd Cantwell. And I was yep. incredibly pleased to see Abdallah Sima back in the team as well. Um, I, I did think, Rob, I, I'm keen to get your thoughts on this as well, that when Sima, when Sima's injury was announced, and it, it sounded a lot like we weren't going to be able to see him again this season because of the severity of the injury, but he didn't return to Brighton. Yeah, I thought, hmm. I, I wonder if we are maybe looking at him for being able to come back in the run-in. Uh, fortunately, we are. Um, I'm hoping, and I, I thought he played well. I actually thought Todd Cantwell played well. I, I, what I like about Cantwell is that he gets emotionally involved in the game in the right way. And I think you saw his celebration after he set up the Cyril Dessers goal, um, that he was back and contributing, which is great. Seema being involved, albeit it was only for you know ten or so minutes, um, still gives us another option. And if we're able to reclaim the Seema form immediately prior to injury, uh, it's definitely a very useful asset to have. But well, look, the, the one thing I'm not necessarily concerned about, but the one question mark I suppose we have is who's going to score the goals. Um, you know, looking ahead to the game on Sunday. You know, like uh, I know Dessos has improved and everything else, but he is not he's not prolific and he's not clinical and he's all those things that have been debated a million times before. Um and Sima is a finisher uh, and he had, he was scoring a barrel of goals before 
uh, his injury. Uh, I think you're absolutely bang on the money. By the way, if that was a if that was a a serious injury, he'd be back at his club. So they obviously knew that there was a good chance that that we could have gotten back for the, the run. And so I think that's why he stayed. So I think I think your your point of view on that's absolutely right. But having him back in the team, I think gives us a gives us another option for goals. Um, which is as I say, they, they kind of worry because you've got Silva, you know, you've got Dessers, um, and you know, there's various debates about the merits of both of those players. I think Silva's a terrific player, but you know whether he's a an out and out goal scorer, I, I, I don't think he is, and I don't think MD really does think that he is either. Um, but Seema gets his goals. Uh, Cantwell, I think, playing well is good. Um, he is, again, we're reaching for the cliche uh, handbook here, Cammy, but you know, he is a confidence player, and I think when his confidence is up, um, he, he, he plays much, much better. I think he enjoys playing against them. Um, I think he'll, he'll enjoy playing against them at home if we start well. Uh, and I think that's really, really important on Sundays that we start well because that will get the crowd going. And uh, I think the, the team plays much, much better when when we have that 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 obvious backing. So, so Seema back, I think, is great because uh, the option on goals. I think just generally the return from injury of, of, of a lot of players. The rest that we've had through the international break and the cancellation of the Dundee game, I think, has done as well. So, you know, we should go into this game at the weekend feeling confident. Yeah, I, 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 we've got to, we've got to go to that game, Cami, in a positive frame of mind because we have to win it. Yeah, I, I think the Dessers one is quite interesting because Cyril Dessers is going to finish on twenty plus goals this season. Rob, I mean, you know, there's, there's, yeah. I, there's no doubt in my mind for that. Um, and again, when you look at the the goal from last weekend's game as well, a great finish gets himself into a great position. Um. I know it's a header that's very close to goal. I do understand that, but you know, for a guy who who needs to feed on goals, he doesn't ever let himself get down with this. And I think something which you've touched on there, which I think is absolutely bang on the money, which is how well we start the game, um, because I think that there's been times where, and yeah, you're absolutely right. Let's grab the cliche handbook where sometimes we need to think about the second goal. Now, yeah. the only reason why I say that is because I think there's been a few times where we've been bitten in the arse with it. Uh, in terms of we've not been able to get the ball over the line. Um, Seaman's not the only one at fault for that, by the way, right? So, uh, Seaman, sorry, I beg your pardon. Dessers is not the only one at fault for that. Yeah. So let's, you know, let's give him a little bit of kind of slack. Um, but I think, you know, the the team do need to realise how important it is to start strong. If you make mistakes, don't worry. Um, I think that, you know, in terms of that, those individuals that we've mentioned, Cantwell, I'm certain, will start. Dessers will start as well. And I think he'd be saying to these guys, don't don't become embroiled in your head. So in Cantwell's position, I'd be saying, don't get too involved in the Ferrari around it. The atmosphere will be unbelievable. Um, I'm sure you boys are all getting together to watch it as a group, so I can imagine what it'll be like with you guys. You can imagine what it'll be like in the stadium. So don't get don't get involved in, in you know, beating yourself up if you make a mistake. Stay focused and stay positive. And I'll be saying exactly the same thing to Cyril Dessers because, as yeah. you mentioned there, Rob, about where the goals come from, um, I'd be more than happy if we had a, a multitude of goal scorers on Sunday, as would you. But if that guy is going to be our main point of attack, we can't allow him to have an off day. We can't allow him to not step up to the mark. He's going to have a strong game, in my opinion, against Cameron Carter-Vickers because, again, he, he seems very capable in Scotland, even though I don't think he's a great defender. Uh, outside of all of that, he's going to have to make sure that he continues to emulate the things that he's improved upon. Doing his running, you know, making his positions, even if he's creating space for other people, um, being strong, be nice and physical against that. And I'm hoping that, you know, given those players that we've talked about, we've talked about Tavernier, we've talked about Cantwell, we've talked about Dessers, start throwing into the mix, you know, a strong performance has to come from what I would expect, Connor Goldson and John Sutter. Um, John Lundstrom has been excellent under Philippe Clement, um, and he can play in these games as well. So, for me, it's all about these players being able to try and just focus on this 90 minutes and what the repercussions could be if we get a result against it. Because I think psychologically, 
um, when we talk about this game and potentially winning in Dundee, and then we start to create a significant gap, I think it starts to tell its own story. Uh, look, so, uh, I, I agree with all of that. Um, the thing about Clement is that he is a great understander of the game, I think, and the importance of, you know, he talks about this sort of synergy between the players and the fans, and you know, he, he understands what it takes to win. And I think he understands how to get that message across to players in a way that Bill didn't, and, and arguably, even though, you know, the longer time goes on, the, you know, the, the, the more sympathy I have for Giovanni Van Bronckhurst, actually. But, you know, the, the, Clement knows um, the importance of getting the players to understand when they need to turn up uh, and they need to turn up in the big games and, you know, why that matters. So I think that, you know, he will be speaking to the team this week about exactly what you've just spoken about. This is a chance not only just to get the points on the board, but to psychologically dent them. Um, because I think if we win uh, at the weekend, then you know it's it's definitely ours to lose. It's definitely ours to lose. Um, uh, you know, we we shouldn't lose the league from that position if we win at the weekend. I know we've still got to go to their place, but I think you know, we could get the points on the board. We could beat Dundee, uh, and we could start to get a bit of a stretch on them. This weekend is so so important, and I think Clement understands that, and I think Clement has the ability to to, to translate that message to the players in a way that we've not had for the past couple of managers. Um, we, Gerard was good at it, I think, but 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 this is so important, Cammy. We must win this game. Yeah, and I think that the way and it's funny you say that because it can sound because I know exactly what you mean, right? And I think everyone listening to this will know exactly what you mean. But I, I caveat some of that by saying it sounds easy to say, you know, the manager will tell them how you know how important winning is, because I, I think he's. I think he's setting expectations because what I fully believe as well, Robin, and we didn't get this under the last two managers, as you say, that he will be very focused on we deal with this game. And if we win, then enjoy Sunday night. But as of Monday morning, we're looking towards Dundee. It's very much a kind of case of we just need to draw a line under it and then go for it. And we did have managers and Gerard was kind of guilty for this when we did start getting wins against Celtic was it just felt like we climbed a massive mountain and it was fantastic. And then we kind of, I suppose, in the, in the managers before Fluke come on, we, we did start to to do it. And you saw it within, I, I think, probably laterally towards the tail end of when we get into 55. Gerard always impressed me because, you know, he would be able to turn up against them and it just became routine. It almost became yeah. BAU rather than something spectacular that, you know, we should celebrate for days. Uh, I think that the you know Van Bronckhurst and, and Clement, I think uh, Clement, sorry, uh, Beal, I think it feels slightly different because I think you know you can say to these players this is all or nothing and we have to leave it all out there and all the rest of it, and then if you get a result you go crazy and you celebrate or whatever. Whereas I think that Clement will allow them the opportunity to savor the victory if we get one, but then straight after that he will bring them back to earth, and that to See, me this feels, is, that, feels quite that, that, quite similar is, that, to like a is, Walter Smith era. Yeah, th th this is my point, though, Cammy. Um, you, you know, I think yes, he will. You know, we'll absolutely be saying, you know, that this is one game and it's three points and all that kind of stuff. But I think, I think the way he differs is that he understands um, that sort of bigger, wider picture that this is more than one game um, because of the impact it could have on the running and you know, both in terms of points and the psychology of it. So uh, while I completely agree with you that, you know, he will be right, okay, we move on uh, and, and we go to the next game and, you know, all we're thinking about now is Dundee. I think he understands just how important, you know, the, the sort of psychological edge um, is in Scotland uh, and, you know, how important it is for us to view, you know, this game as an important step episode of winning the league. So so I, I, I think it's both. I think he sees both. I think you know he can say, look, this is this is an important game and it's in its own merits. But I do think he understands just how important it is in terms of this team and, and, and their ability to win the league. Um and that is definitely what we're Smith like. That it's exactly who I was thinking about as you were talking there. That's that's what Smith was great at. Smith was great at winning big games when it mattered, but understanding, you know, when to go, when to push, you know, 
when the big victories needed to happen. And I see a lot of that with, with Clermont as well. Yeah, and I think, you know, if we win, then I think it will be a quick... We go out, we get the, the applause from the fans because, you know, the place will be absolutely bouncing if, if, if you know, we, we get the three points. We get in the dressing room, we share that moment together as a group. And then, as I say, Monday morning, you know, we're back to business because we've obviously got the game on Wednesday. So, yeah, I, I think, you know, we've covered a lot within that perspective. And that's why we, you and I can talk confidently about this, Rob, because the manager has earned our trust. Um, I yeah. don't mean to sound self-entitled when I say that. I always think it. I always think that whenever you know we talk about where uh, we are from a from a fan base, where I am as a fan, and you know why I have the doubts and the nerves and stuff. And listen, we're going to be going through all of that within the next you know the next four days. But for me, the most important thing now is the manager um, fully understands what has to happen, how important it can be. Um, if we have a slip up, then it's not the end of the world because I'm certain that he will keep those players focused. Um, but I, I, you know, he mentions a lot about the joy of football. That's what he wants to see within the fans' faces. And yeah. I think that the way he's been able to kind of galvanise us on the park and off the park, um, as a, you said it before, you know, we've talked about Tavernier as a totem, as a figurehead. That's absolutely what Philippe Clement is. He's he's absolutely, you know, what we would always call it, you know, the prime minister of Rangers. He's in control of it. He understands exactly what yeah. has to happen. And we all follow our leader because we trust him. Um, for me, the most important thing now is that the players believe in themselves. Um, they didn't get into this position by accident. It's taken a lot of hard no. work. It's taken a lot of improvement and dedication and commitment. I know it's a lot to ask. I totally understand it. We've mentioned on the on the, the the network already in terms of prior to the international break. We know that players are tired. We know that players had looked leggy and they needed the, the uh, international break just to try and recover. Um, but we have to go again. And I think that if anything I could say to these players right now is you have earned the right to do this. So trust in yourselves. We trust you. The manager trusts you. And just, again, like I say, go out with that belief and that passion. Start well, um, as you mentioned. Um, and I think that we could have a very successful afternoon. Uh, absolutely. You know, look, we've, we've got eight games games between now and the end of the season and we have to start that eight game run with a win this weekend I, I just if we don't win I think I, th I think I think we're in trouble I, I think we've got to win this game um, for the points on the board and the psychology of the piece because um, they have a lot of players in their team that, that know how to get things across the line because they've been involved over the, over the course of the past wee while um, where they won a lot of trophies um, we need to knock that. We need to knock them off that uh, off that perch, and you know, show them that we can actually uh, close things out. So I, I, I just think this game at the weekend is absolutely pivotal to the rest of the season, and we've just got to win it. And by the way, I do think we will win. So there's a prediction. Good man, good man yourself. Well, listen, that will do us for this week on extra. Um, if you're anything like me, you're probably already starting to go into the YouTube highlights of previous old fun games. <laughs> And uh, going down those particular rabbit holes, my wife, uh, thankfully, has been married to me long enough now that she knows when these games come up, Rob, that, you know, I'll just watch a quick game for 10 or 10 or 11 minutes and then I'm, you know, away in my own wee world for about, you know, an hour and a half because I've just watched so many different games with it and stuff as well. So, yeah, it's building up and I'm fairly certain uh, your own battle fever will be getting you know, get getting on the boil just now and I think it'll be coming to an absolute crescendo when we get to... to well, our time Sunday morning. Yeah, I can't wait. Cannot wait. It's um, there's nothing, there's not, there's nothing quite like it, Gammy. Even even what, from the other side of the world, there's nothing quite like it. And what is your plans for Sunday, Robert? You and the chaps all getting together for it? Yeah, we'll all be in the uh, supporters club and the Trafalgar and and, and deepest darkest one chai. So there'll be a good crowd, and you know, there's usually people coming through Hong Kong as well. So there's always people sort of visiting the club as well. So there'll be there'll be big numbers, and uh, the atmosphere will be the atmosphere will be good. I can, uh, I can, I, that, that can be guaranteed. And, you know, and, and if we do get off to that great start, then you know, it's a brilliant, brilliant occasion. Uh, so really looking forward to it. Nah, fantastic. I hope you and, and everyone involved have an absolutely brilliant time. Um, 
just before we wrap up, I would like to thank our executive producers, Mike Lee and Paul Myers, our show sponsors for ExtraZenithCoins.com. Please head over to see some fantastic merch on there as well. Um, and most importantly for me um, is to thank my very good friend, Rob Shorthouse. Rob, uh, we do try and align these purposefully within our respective time zones to make sure that you get on, but um, fantastic contribution as always. I will be making a concerted effort to have you on Extra more often because more than anything else, I just love talking to you. Ah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pleasure to be on, Cami, and, uh, and here's hoping that um, you and I it's not speaking ahead of big games because I think the last time I was on extra was ahead of the cup final. Um, so hopefully, you know, that tradition of us winning big games after we, we get together on extra continues this weekend. A hundred percent. I can guarantee it'll become a staple of it. No one else is getting on. <laughs> um, if you'd like to hear more from myself, from Rob and from a whole host of some fantastic podders and now Mr. Paul Gascoigne, please head on, uh, head on over to our Patreon site, which is patreon.com forward slash heart and hand. David will be back with you as uh, normal on Monday with flagship as well, unpacking the old firm weekend. If you are heading along to the game, if you're heading out to, to go and watch it, enjoy yourself, stay safe. Let's get a win, Rangers. We are all so desperate for it. We know that we can do it. And now it's over to you guys. And we have the trust and belief in you. Have a brilliant weekend, everyone. And we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you.